on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Come on out there. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. This is Tuesday night Bible study on tonight. And I am so grateful to be before you on this morning, on this evening. And uh, and I just uh, give God all the praise and honor. Listen, we have been in a in a series um, regarding praying. And the blessing of it is, is that I have never really uh, done a series in praying. But as I have been studying um, this message about praying, I find that it has just been an eye opener for me. And uh, and I cannot even explain enough of the seriousness of how we communicate with God. Because within your prayer, when we hold that prayer to the to the best of our abilities, as far as acknowledging who God is and what God does for us and keep him in the position that he's supposed to be in and not in a position that is equal to us, then we will find our prayers being answered. And as we were uh, ministering this message on part two, do we have time? It summarizes really the title itself. When God gave me that title, it summarizes where we are in him. That society has us moving and shaking and going and moving and shaking and going to a place where we don't spend enough time talking to God. We may drive from our home to our work and that be the only time that we speak to him. Or we may be getting ready to go to bed at night and that be the only time that we speak to him. But a large, vast amount of us only pray over our food. And even that it is just a, a, a means of, of something that we just go through. We don't really take that prayer to uh, to the limits of what what and how important that prayer really is. When we're talking about sanctifying our food, do we really allow ourselves to understand what we actually saying or we do we just go through the motions to say that we prayed before we ate? And so this whole message, uh, even part one, was preparing us and getting us. Uh, in a in a position where we are always taking God and moving him back to the place that he's supposed to be in because man has watered down prayer. And so as we get started on today, let's go ahead and raise our Bibles in the air because I really want to talk to you uh, this afternoon about prayer and and um, and how do we actually uh, define it in a way that it it works for us. And so there's a couple of things that we're going to bring out on tonight. So raise your Bibles in the air. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by my circumstances. I am only moved in faith by the word of God. Hallelujah. I want to back up for just a moment before we get started and look at Matthew 6, 9 and 13. Uh, that was the the main scripture text uh, of our first um, lesson uh, when we talked about prayer and do we have time. And uh, and we piggybacked on it last Sunday. But I want to start off with that prayer uh, for just a moment and verse nine, it says, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So so let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word on tonight, God. Father, shed some light even more in depth about 
your prayer and how it is important to communicate with you and what it does for us and how it blesses us. And so, God, I ask you to honor each and every person, Lord, that is looking, that is viewing this message on tonight, rather if it's tonight or a year from now. Let it be something that is said, Lord, that will bring them closer to you. Let it be something that is said that will change their mindset of the importance of communicating with you, praying unto you, God. And we honor you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So to start off, when we talk about the Lord's Prayer, it's broken down in about four segments, and I'm going to read those to you. Um, first of all, we always give him praise. So when you first think about the Lord's Prayer, you're thinking about how Jesus had taught this prayer. And he always gave the Father praise first. So in other words, everything that we do when we get ready to come to God, you want to thank him first. You want to acknowledge him first. You want to acknowledge who he is in your life first. We don't want to just go to God and, and just begin to ask because what truly what happens is once we get out what we're desiring God to do, we're gone. And that's where the, the title came in. Do we have time? Because if we have time, we will always acknowledge God, always give him praise, always give him glory. So that, that's step number one. And then step number two is give us this day our daily bread. In other words, provide provision. In other words, that God is going to provide for us what we need today. And then the third one is forgive our debts. I said before that this is one of the most important parts uh, other than giving God praise and glory because this allows us to stay clean before him. We have gotten out of asking for forgiveness. We have gotten out of understanding that when we come before God, we need to come before God asking him to cleanse us. In other words, look at it in this manner. You're going before a king. And when you go in before a king, one that has developed us, made us, breathed into us, one that has created all things, you go going in front of him. So if that this God that we serve does not like sin, does not associate with sin, does not want to be around it, cannot be around it, will not sin himself, then we supposed to walk in front of him washed. And so that's what this prayer is teaching us. It's teaching us to give him honor, thanking him for our daily bread, and then asking God to forgive us. And then the last thing is, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. So you're actually summarizing the fact that he is all God. And that he is over all the kingdoms of the earth and all the kingdoms of heaven. And that, and that as you are uh, praying your prayer and asking the things of your needs, that you honor him in, a, in such a way that you know that he will provide the need that you have. Why? Because he's over all the kingdoms. He's over all the things of this earth. And he is over all of the things that we are in need of. And when we place God in a perspective place where he's supposed to be, then we can understand that it's not just prayer. It's a formula. It's a guide. However you want to do it, it is a guide to always come to him. And I used to say, uh, once I got done and I asked God to forgive me, my next statement, and I said this once before, my next statement was, God, look at me through the blood because I am graced just to be before you. And so because I'm graced just to be before you, God, don't look at 
this wretched body. Don't look at this person, this this one that continues to sin and always continues to sin and don't do things right and would wish that he could be uh, like Jesus. But look at me through the blood of Jesus, through the grace that you have allowed me to be able to be saved and filled with your Holy Spirit. Look at me that way. Then I normally ask what I am in need of. Now, that's my way because I want God to to know that I am so appreciative of what he's done for me, that he has given a person like me an opportunity to be able to not just stand before you now, but before I even became pastor, I prayed that prayer. That was that was me connecting to God and seeing that's what it's about. It's about how do we connect to God? And we talked about taking the name prayer out of the vocabulary in a sense, not in a sense of the importance of prayer, but in a sense of understanding that it is you and God talking to each other. When you think about it as you and God talking to each other, it becomes a conversation. And when it becomes a conversation, now you have dialogue with God. Now you can be patient in his answer. Now you can listen clearly. Now you can stay present before him. Even not in a sense that you're always on your knees and you're and you're waiting to hear from God. But I'm talking about present in your spirit that whatever you ask God for your ears, no matter what you are doing, your ears are in tune to the spirit of God to tell you whatever that answer is that you ask for. That's what I'm talking about. Never leaving his presence. Always at a very at the very moment that you're always talking to God. Every time you get a break, every time you 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 get a clearance in your day, you are always talking to God. And see, when you do that and you understand that prayer is a is a conversation. Now you can stay before God until your answer comes. And that's what lines up to our scripture text that we talked about on today. Let's look at that for just a moment. Uh, Matthew 21, 20 through 22. When the disciples saw it, they were astonished and asked, how is it that the fig tree has withered away at all, all at once? Jesus replied to them, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, if you have faith, personal trust and confidence in me and do not doubt or allow yourself to be drawn into two directions, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. If God wills it and whatever you ask for in prayer, believing you receive it. Amen. Amen. Everything of that scripture text for you to be able, first of all, to dry up your issues that come into your life. That to me is the fig. But what what God revealed to me is if. The statement that Jesus made in verse 21, it says, Jesus replied to them, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, if you have faith, personal trust and confidence in me. In other words, do you and have you and are you operating in the things of God that you can have the faith To believe that when you speak, your fig, your issue, your personal problem, that you got the power to dry it up. Now, I'm saying this because it all goes back to the Lord's prayer. If you can pray that prayer, then you got the power to speak to your situation. That's what Jesus was talking about. 
learning how to speak to the problems that we have, not running to God and saying, God, I need you to take care of it. When God is saying, I gave you the power to speak my word, to have the faith to believe that when you say it, your fig is draw, dried up. Now, when you have bigger problems and bigger issues, your mountain. God is saying that I still gave you the power to deal with your small issues or your large issues. But you got to have faith and personal trust in Jesus Christ. Because that's the name that God has given all power to. And so what I've learned with God, and that's why I say to you about having conversations with God, is you stay before him. You always stay before God until your answer is met. And then after your answer is met, you give him praise and glory. If you have no more need, if you have no more issues that you got to deal with, then the only thing that you need to do is glorify God. Look at, um, for just a moment, a uh, parable that Jesus taught that really blessed me, um, Luke 18, 1 through 8. Luke 18, 1 through 8. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to teach them that they should always pray and never become discouraged. Stop right there. That is one of the most important first scripture text that we should be holding on to when we're talking about prayer. It says you should always pray and never give up. Never stop believing that what you're asking God to do in your life, that it will not come to pass. That's why Jesus, when he was teaching the disciples, told them that they got to have faith and absolute trust in him is because you have to believe and you cannot waver. You got to stick to it. And the only way that I find myself this personally to be able to stay before God is to continue to continue to have communication. And I like to say it, continue to talk to him. The Bible says it's prayer. It's all the same thing. But for me to take the stigma out of prayer of what man has, has put it to be, I use talking to God. Because talking to God, I am now able to speak to him where I am. If I'm not in a good mood, I can let God know. If I'm on a mountaintop, I can let God know. And I can let him know in my own language, in my own terms, I can let him know. And so that's what is so important. It says, never become discouraged. Because we do not know what God is doing on your behalf. That's why you have to become, to be able to talk to your mountain and be able to talk to your fig tree, you got to be able to have a, a uh, you have to be able to have grown in God. You got to be a seasoned individual. And I'm not talking about seasoned in time. I'm talking about you have gotten to a place that you believe God no matter what. No matter how it's looking, you believe and you depend and you rely on God. That's what I'm talking about. So that when you're waiting, you're not being discouraged. You go into a praise. You go into a prayer. You, go into, you begin to still talk to him. That's why you got to always stay before him until your answer comes. Let's continue reading that in verse 2. In a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected people. And there was a widow in that same town who kept coming to him and pleading for her right, saying, Help me against my opponent. For a long time, the judge refused to act. But at last, he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God, 
or respect people. Yet because of all the trouble this widow is giving me, I will see to it that she gets her rights. If I don't, she will keep on coming and finally wear me out. Verse 6 is our key verse here. It says, and the Lord continued, listen to what the corrupt judge said. Now will God not judge in favor of his own people who cry to him day and night for help? Will he be slow to help them? Here's your answer. I tell you, he will judge in their favor. Put your name right there. He will judge in Mark's favor. He will judge in your favor and do it quickly. But will the Son of Man find faith on earth when he comes? In other words, when he approaches but based on your prayer and he gets ready to answer your prayer, will he find faith? Do you believe what you're asking for? Do you believe that when you speak to your problem, that your mountain will move and be cast into the sea? regardless of where that mountain go, I just needed to come out of my life. That's, the, that's how you have to be. And you got to be that way as a mature saint. The only way to get there, it starts with what Jesus was teaching the disciples on learning how to pray, learning how to communicate with God. And everything stems from that. And it's all underlined with faith. Good God Almighty. Jesus said, this is how you pray. Then he comes back and he tells you, do not stop. Don't stop asking. Don't stop staying before God. Don't stop believing. Don't stop listening. Stay in tune until God answers you. Glory be to God. He's, he's, he's answering your question that he will always come to your rescue but you cannot stop believing. You got to be like the widow. Amen? So our last scripture text, and I'm getting ready to close. Look at Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. This scripture text really blessed me because it really talked about uh, how we are supposed to be in God. When you talk about believing God and having faith in God and trusting God, this is where you got to be. This is a mature saint. And this is what God is talking to us about to be able to dry up your fig, your problem, or move your mountain of whatever that may be in your life. You got to be a mature saint. And Jeremiah speaks of that individual. If you can see yourself in this scripture text, then your mountains should be moving. Your figs, your issues, your problems should be drying up before you. You're supposed to be able to walk through your valley knowing that God will be there to rescue you just as it was indicated with the widow. If the judge says, man, I got to go ahead and help her, how much will Christ help us? Amen. Amen. So let's read Jeremiah 17 and 7 through 8. It says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Stop right there. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. But this second part, whose trust is the Lord. Good God Almighty. I, I really never saw that until I was studying this message. Whose trust is, that means that you're all in all. That means that there is nothing outside of God that you trust in but him. That he is your ride or die. He is your all in all. He is no matter what's happening. You will not move out of trusting God. No matter what somebody say to you. No matter what's happening in your life, no matter what they bring to you, no matter how it looks, no matter what Satan is saying, you don't move at all. Your trust 
is the Lord. Glory be to God. Right there, you have to know, am I at that level? That's when your mountains can move. Because why? Because you got the power to speak to your situation. And when you know that you know that you know that you know that that mountain going to move because I'm speaking God's word to my situation, then, then you are a mature saint. Then you can operate in this mountain moving faith. Then, let's keep reading. Verse 8. He's describing you. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes. Here we go. This is your problem. It's saying to you that when your problem arise, you don't fear because that first scripture, that first, the first scripture text that's you, that you trust in God no matter what. So when your problem comes, you don't fear the heat, the heat of your issue, of whatever that is in your life, the heat of the peace that you may need, whatever that is in your life, no matter when it happens, and all of us go through ups and downs and valleys and going around issues and, and dealing with certain circumstances. And I used to tell my wife all the time, most of my issues come third party. What do I mean by that? That is always outside of the house. It's always not the spouses. It's something that came into Rather, if that is finance issues, job issues, kids issues, extended family issues, friends issues. It seems to always be third party that Satan tries to use one of these things to infiltrate inside of your mind, inside of your spirit that causes the issue. And God is saying that if you are mature, then you are planted like a tree by the water, meaning that you're always getting nutrients of the Word of God. It's always germinating in your spirit that when that problem arises, you don't fear it. When that heat comes of that issue, you don't even waver. You cool as a cucumber. That's what it's talking about. For its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of the drought. Oh my goodness. This actually is everybody's life. I don't know a person that don't go into a drought at one season or another. We're either on a mountaintop or we're in the valley or we're heading one of those directions because life changes. Issues arises. Have you ever had an experience that it just seems like everything was falling apart? Home life not doing well, issues on the job, issues at church, issues with the kids, things just not adding up. This is your valley. This is your drought season. And when you're in your drought season, your leaf, never goes dry. What's your leaf? The word that is within inside of you. It never go dormant. You still stand on the word of God as you walk. That's why the scriptures say you walk through your valley of the shadow of death that you fear no evil. You do not fear. Why? Because of the first scripture text. Whose trust is the Lord's. Amen? Amen. For it does not cease, stop to bear fruit. Oh my goodness. See, sometimes, and I'm closing out, sometimes what happens is we, first of all, we always should be bearing fruit. That's what the scripture text is talking about when Jesus was speaking that he draw, he, he, the fruit, the, the tree had leaves but had no, no fruit to bear. So because it had no fruit, 
Jesus cursed the tree and it died. That's why the first thing that we have to do in our life is this scripture text. We have to always bear fruit. No matter what's going on, no matter if you're on your mountaintop or in your valley, you should be bearing some form of fruit. That means things should be taking place. If, I'm not, if, if it's not taking place in me, I'm being a blessing to somebody else. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a give you a case in point, and I talked about this uh, a couple of months ago, I believe. When I got laid off work, that was a drought season. I was in my drought. But I never stopped going to church. I never stopped giving. I never stopped tithing. I never stopped praising God. I never stopped communicating with God. I would still always look for my blessing come around the corner. Every time I went on an interview, I expected that job to be mine. But this is what happened. I was in the mortgage industry. And in the mortgage industry, I helped people fix their credit to, put, to position them to be able to purchase a house. And so at the church, I used to teach finances, teaching them the steps of improving their credit score, teaching them the steps to get out of debt, teaching them the ste to steps to be able to purchase their homes and the wisest way to purchase their cars. You know, sometimes people, people like my son, for instance, my son don't need to purchase a car. He needs to lease a vehicle because he trades a man too often. So depending on your situation, I taught finances based upon who you were, how you spend money, so that you can do better and be better prepared in life. Well, when I went through my drought, my figs, my tree never stopped producing fruit. Why? Because I continue to bless others. I continue to push them to be better financially, push them to love God, push them. That's when you know that you are seasoned and that your faith is God. Your faith is in the Lord. That's the mature saint that can speak to their mountain and their mountain be cast away. That's the mature saint that when God looks at your tree, it just don't have leaves, but it's producing fruit. That's what we're talking about. When we're talking about all the way going back to the Lord's Prayer, it starts there. But that Lord's Prayer, you have to be this person that is being described in Jeremiah. Because God is saying to you, I've given you power to speak to your own situation. And it begins with the authority in the Lord's Prayer. So today I'm asking you, what do your tree look like? Is it just leaves or are you bearing fruit? Are you able to go through a drought season and not have a pity party? Are you able to go through some rough times and still believe that God is going to bring you out of it? Do you trust God enough that your trust is in him? That's the question that we have to ask all of us, have to ask ourselves, because there are going to be some mountains, there are going to be some fig trees that comes up into our life, issues of life that we have never experienced before. And the only way to get to the place that you can be fruitful even in your drought is you have to have the communication the faith, and the trust in God. So I, again, I ask you today, what do your tree look like? Well, give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope and pray that as we end this series, this two-part series on today, that we are in a position to ask ourselves that question. 
and begin to look at prayer as communication, as talking to God. That now that we go before God, we utilize the formula of the Lord's Prayer, place it into our own dialogue, and continue to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with God until our answers are met. And as we grow in him, we can now speak to our own problems through the word of God and see our mountains and issues become dried up and cast into the sea. But you got to read and study this Jeremiah text 17, 7 and 8. Because this is where you want to strive to be always so that we will always be planted by the water. What is the water? The word of God. Amen. Amen. So if, though, if there is somebody today that don't know God, I ask you today to come. Ask God to come into your heart. Ask God to cleanse you, save you. And watch over you. And there's a number on the screen that if you text save to that number, yours truly will come before you and lead you to Christ. And as you complete the application that comes after that, I'll get a notification and I'll reach out to you. Find out what you need prayer in. and Are you okay? Do you understand what this walk is all about? And be able to walk you through that process. Amen. And those of you that are not, don't have a church home, and you, you want to be covered, I want you to text join and be a part of Voices of Faith North, where we are trusting God and believing God, and we are becoming Jeremiah, the description of what he has brought before us on tonight. Amen. We continue to strive to be better, and I want you to go ahead and text join to that number. Amen. Excuse me. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Um, it is tithes and offering time. I want to mention to you about our building fund to continue to sow into our building fund. We are we have three buildings um, this weekend that we will be um, looking at this weekend and we are pursuing uh, our own facility so that we can do more and that we can um, also do more community work in our own facility as well. And so as I indicated to you before, uh, we are not holding this money uh, for anything else. It is strictly for the building fund. So when you sow your seed on this afternoon, I want you to make sure you put in the comment section building fund so that it will be directed to the proper place. Amen. Amen. And those of you that uh, have not had an opportunity to sow seed or if you are paying tithes, uh, then please look at the numbers on the screen and you will be able to sow seed. You will be able to do your building fund or pay tithes during uh, this time. Amen. Amen. So as we all know here at Voices of Faith North, we don't sow just to sow. We sow because we love God. We sow that we because we care about who God is in our life. And we know that we trust him with all of everything that we have, including our finances. And when you understand that, then you can be blessed and highly favored and the Malachi blessing will come back up to you. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, right now for the tide. We thank you for the offering. We thank you for those who are sowing seed, Lord, those that are trusting in the building fund, trusting in their seed, trusting in their finances. God, we ask God right now, touch them right where they are, Lord. Bless them right where they are, Lord. Encourage them right where they are, Lord. And bring your word, your, 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 your true uh, word where you say in your word, test me, see one eye. Pour out a blessing that they won't have room enough to receive, Lord. Honor your word because, God, they're step, stepping out on faith by sowing their seed, Lord. And we give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So here at Voice of Faith North, we're changing lives by faith. God bless you.